Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be working on some little comic strips. So the other day when I was working on my sketchbook slam challenge, I was filling up pages in my sketchbook and I decided to do some little comics and they were really rough, nothing special, but I decided I wanted to take them a step further and make them nicer. I just wanted to establish a more concrete look to my comic strips so that I could make more down the line if I ever feel like it. It's not something I plan on doing on a regular basis, but if I come up with an idea, I can whip up a comic just as something fun to do. So before I jumped into recreating these little comic strips, I decided to hop onto Skillshare and see what kind of videos they had related to creating comics. I'm sure many of you have heard me talk about Skillshare before, but if you don't know what it is, it's an online learning community. They have a bunch of video tutorials about a bunch of different creative things like photography, drawing, designing things, all kinds of topics. Skillshare is actually sponsoring this video and the first 200 people to use my link in the video description will get their first two months for free. Then after that, it's as low as $10 a month or if you decide you don't wanna continue, you can choose to cancel at any time. So when I hopped onto Skillshare, I was actually really surprised to see some lessons from some comic artists I recognized. One of the classes was by Sarah Anderson who does the Sarah Scribbles comics and her video was called Creating Web Comics from Sketches to Final Comic. Then there is also a lesson by Shen from Altered Comics called Happy Angry Odd Drawing Faces for Web Comics. So I watched those two videos plus a couple other ones and then I decided to dive into creating my little comic strip. So the first thing I had to do was revisit the character design because I wanted to tweak it a bit from my original one because I didn't like her round bowl cut head. <laughs> so I drew the character multiple times, playing around with different facial features, playing around with the hair, trying to figure out what I wanted it to look like, what kind of clothes would she wear, how tall would the character be, what would the limbs be like, how many fingers does she have, just little details like that I was trying to hammer out. And then once I was somewhat satisfied with the design, I drew it several times so that I could draw it consistently. I got down a system where the head's a circle and then I draw the hair around it by just the basic shape and then draw the curliness of the hair in afterwards just so it's more consistent. And I practiced drawing the bodies just so I could draw her the same height every time. I mean, it's not perfect. My character is not gonna look exactly the same from comic to comic, but that's something that hopefully I could nail down going forward. The design's pretty simple, so it's not too bad. So after I had the design down, I decided to practice some different expressions. So something I got from Shen's lesson was this downloadable expression chart that you can print off, and this is what it looks like. I decided I didn't wanna draw directly on the chart, but instead I would draw a little bit bigger inside my sketchbook, but I still followed the same categories that he had laid out. One of the interesting tips I got from Shen's video was that when the eyes are farther apart, the character seems more dumb, especially if you have the mouth lifted up as well. Whereas if the proportions are more realistic, it makes the character look more smart. That's why I was like, okay, I need to make sure my character's eyes are at least somewhat far apart because I want her to have a dumb look to her. Like not really dumb, but just kind of a little bit dumb. Just goofy, just so she looks a bit silly. I don't know. So once I was done with the expressions, I decided to move on to the digital side of this because I had the original versions of the comics sketched out on ballpoint pen in my sketchbook and I had to then translate it to a digital form. If you want your comic strips to be serialized and be similar to each other, even though they're their own separate little comic strip and separate joke, you want all of your format to be consistent. So I was thinking, okay, the size I'm making these boxes, that's gonna be my standard size. The thickness of the black line of the box, I want that to be standard across all my comics. I was even considering having a set number of panels for all my comics, but it's just hard because it depends on the joke. Sometimes you need more panels, sometimes you need less. So I actually have a few different formats that I saved off, like a three panel version, a two panel version, and then a four panel version, and they're just blank. And I can just open those Photoshop files to create future comics in them. One of the little tidbits I learned from Sarah's video is that you can add a stroke to a selection. Like when there's nothing there, nothing selected, it's just blank space and you got the marching ants. You can add a stroke to that. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> I knew you could add strokes to things. I just didn't know you could add it to a blank selection. So that was her tip on making the little panels is that you just create your selection and then add the stroke. I had no idea. I'm like, oh my God, this is life changing. How did I not know this? Another thing that I'm ashamed I didn't know about Photoshop that I learned from Sarah's video is that you can add a grid to your artwork. 
I didn't know that. I knew you had the rulers and I knew you could drag out little lines from the rulers, but I didn't know you could just make a grid pop up. So if you hold down the control key and then press the key that has the quotation marks and the apostrophe on it, then it will make the grid pop up. And if you press it again, it'll make it go away. I can't believe I didn't know about that. I feel so stupid. I'm like, wow, <laughs> these are really great Photoshop hacks that aren't probably hacks, but to me they're hacks because I didn't know about it. But yeah, once I have my panels, I then sketched in a light color and then I went over top with inks. I decided I just wanted to keep my comics black and white just for the sake of simplicity. They'll take less time to make and I think it'll just be more consistent. I was toying with the idea of maybe doing partial color, like maybe everything's black and white except the characters in the scene. Like maybe they, their shirts are colored and their pants, unless they're colored in solid black, just something like that. But ultimately I decided to just keep it simple and not add any color. But because there's no color, I wanted to add some black areas to the character because I don't want it all to just look white. You don't want the panel to just look pure white. So I made the hair black and then I also made her leggings black. Initially the leggings weren't gonna be colored in and the shoes would be black, but I just decided to reverse that because the shoes didn't add enough black to kind of balance out the hair. So by making it the leggings, there's more black on the bottom to balance out the top half of her body. It just makes your comic look more appealing and it helps your character pop out from the background. So yeah, if you're doing black and white, color some things in black. So when translating my initial comics over to this format, I made a few changes. So for the one where she's decluttering, I realized the middle panel was not really necessary. It said one hour later and that didn't even need to be there. I don't need to show passage of time by inserting that. So I brought it down to just two panels and there's the before and the after. I think that gets the point across a little better. Then there is the artist alley one. Really the only change I made is that I made her signs bigger because when I first sketched this in my sketchbook, I did it as a full page comic strip, but that's dangerous because you have so much space to draw in that you end up drawing some details smaller than you should because if you scale it down, you can't read those details. So initially there was that sign that said prints $10, but then there was a little $10 sign on each of the prints and it was so small you couldn't really read it. So I added one big $10 sign in the corner and then I added a banner on the front of the table that said prints $10. And then the rest of it is pretty much the same. Then for the self checkout one, it's pretty much identical. <laughs> I didn't really change anything except I updated the character design. So after moving on from the first comic and working on the second two, I realized I started drawing the eyes too small and I wasn't keeping consistent with the first comic. So I had to go back in and try to fix it. Although with the Artist Alley one in the final panel, I want her pupils to be tiny. Her eyes are meant to be bigger, but with tinier pupils, just because it's a funny expression. But for her more neutral expressions, I had to go back in and make her eyes bigger. Another thing I tried to keep constant was the thickness of my line because not only was I using the same brush throughout the whole thing I was trying to keep it at the same size which was 10 pixels but there were some things that I made it a little bit thicker just so it'd stand out more like the text on the artist alley sign and the text on the print signs at the table so I would sometimes go thicker especially if it was a close-up of the character like I think that final close-up in the final panel I went a little bit thicker on the line just so that she would look more normal like how she normally looks because if you draw the character bigger but keep the line with skinny it doesn't look like the same character design it just starts to look more off model so yeah it's something to keep in mind then when I saved off the comics I saved off a full res version and then I saved off a second version where I reduced the resolution to 100 dpi I thought 72 was just a little bit too small and too blurry so that's why I went with 100 it's a low enough resolution that if you try to blow up the image it'll be blurry but at the same time, it reads nice and crisp and clean when you're seeing it at a smaller size. That's just to help prevent art theft and prevent people from having a full resolution version of your files. So I keep the high resolution for myself in case I ever want to print it off on something. And then the low resolution is the one I upload to the internet. And I also made sure to add a link to my website in the bottom corner. You could just put your name, whatever you want. I figured why not link to my website because it is my name and it just <laughs> gets more traffic to my website maybe, who knows? I'll have to add a page on my website where I put my little comics. But like I said, I don't know how <laughs> how consistent I'm gonna be with this. It's just gonna be occasionally when I think of a cute idea, cause I have done this in the past, but my comics were not consistent with each other. And so now I have a, a format nailed 
down, right? So I think that that'll be nice. If I think of an idea, I can just whip something together. Although it does take more time than it looks. <laughs> it looks like really simple art, but it took me a while. I wanted to make sure the lines were clean and make sure it looks all good. So that took some time. If you're wondering what that thing in the corner is, that's Lazy Nozumi Pro. It's a line stabilizer. It makes my lines smoother. Drawing the circles for the eyes is still hard though. Sometimes you get a nice round circle, but then when you close the circle, the lines don't even touch and you're like, oh, well, rip. <laughs> it's handy if the pupil is touching the edge of the eye because that's where you start is where the pupil is. So if your lines don't perfectly match up, you can't even tell because it's hidden by the pupil. But every other time it's a pain in the butt. But anyway, that was my little foray into comic strips using lessons on Skillshare for inspiration and for tips. Like I mentioned, the link is down below for the first 200 people if you want those two months of Skillshare for free. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring my channel again because it really, really helps. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video.